Hey, Craig, we're live. Thanks, Kristen. And welcome everyone to the McClatchy Awards 2020. We're excited to gather virtually to announce the winners of our two annual awards and to announce two exciting new awards programs we're launching. The President's Award recognizes the highest expression of essential local journalism across our 30 newsrooms. And the Chairman's Circle Awards recognizes the highest performing advertising sales colleagues. We will also launch two new awards today that recognize outstanding performance and leadership across our enterprise, but more on that later. Joining me today are Kevin McClatchy, chairman of our company, Kristen Roberts, our VP of News, and Nick Johnson, our VP and head of advertising. So let's get this started. First, we'll announce the winners of the President's Awards. We're pleased to honor 10 winners this year, all extraordinary examples of the essential local journalism being done in our communities on a daily basis. These are the very definition of essential. This year's honorees excelled in investigative journalism, strong accountability, and enterprise work. It's our 20th year of recognizing the best of McClatchy journalism, and the 2019 contest was particularly competitive. Let me turn things over to Kristen for more details. Thanks, Craig, and hello, everyone. We marked the 20th year of the President's Awards by changing things up a bit. This year, nominations for the President's Awards were democratized. Everyone in news was invited to make a nomination. We also upped our ambition in, in assembling a group of judges to review the nominations. We invited a group of distinguished, highly accomplished human beings who are also advocates for the importance of local journalism. And we held fast to our commitment of encouraging the next generation by including a journalism student as well. Our judges this year were Dean Backey, executive editor of the New York Times, Richard Gingras, vice president of news for Google, Raju Narasetti, Global Publishing Director at McKinsey. Jennifer Preston, Vice President of Journalism at the Knight Foundation. Laura Zornosa, a journalism student at Northwestern's Medill School of Journalism. And our very own Cynthia DuBose, Senior Editor for Audience Growth and Special Projects at McClatchy. Our judges were inspired and impressed by the quality and impact of the nominations, and they were motivated to send personal messages. It was extremely enjoyable and inspiring to read, watch, and listen to such a trove of fine journalism. I say inspiring because the work represents the best of what journalism can be and needs to be. Informative, insightful, empathetic, constructive. In each case, stories that didn't tell me what to think, but helped me know how to think about the challenging issues and events within the communities we live in. I thank you for that. Truly remarkable. Like all journalists who thrive on deadlines, I put off reading the entries till the very last minute. But once I got into it, I was astounded by the range of journalism, the investigative quality, um, the breadth of topics, uh, the use of video, the use of um, reader engagement, uh, it was just astonishing, and it was very hard to then choose um, the winners um, because there could be so many more that we could have given out the awards to. But I'm really happy um, to have done this, and it tells me how much we're going to miss if local journalism disappears. And I'm so glad to see McClatchy and all of you fighting the good fight and doing amazing journalism. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you for having me look at uh, your work. The winners of this year's President's Award represent the extraordinary level of journalism being produced across our newsrooms and the country. I want to express my deep gratitude to our winners and everyone in our newsrooms who every day are delivering on our mission of essential local journalism in the communities we serve. And so with that, Craig and I are going to hand out some well-deserved trophies and we'll quote from our judges' comments and summaries. First up, to the Raleigh News and Observer for When a Hero Came Home. The UNC Charlotte shooting coverage was a poignant, multi-layered profile of a family's grief 
at the loss of a loved one who died attempting to stop an all too common incident of mass shooting. When a hero comes home, goes beyond the moment, beyond the media spotlight, beyond the simple idealization of a hero to present the pride and pain of a family accepting that Riley Howell did what he would expect of, of others and thus what he himself would have to do. So Riley would usually make the eggs when we do our breakfast and he um, always cooks with cast iron. Yeah. So we are trying to keep his cast iron pans in good shape. Nope. These things that remind you of him are just, they just pop up. They just pop up and, and you're glad for them and they crush you at the same time. It's a lot of eggs. How many eggs does she put in here? It's hard for me to see my three kids standing there versus my four kids standing there. To the Kansas City Star, for throwaway kids and the grave failures of the foster care system in America. This was a year-long investigation that examined and exposed what exactly happens to children across the country after they age out of the foster care system. Taking community engagement to the next level, the STAR reached out to nearly 6,000 inmates in 12 different states to compile a powerful image of the systemic pipeline that shuttles children from foster care into prison. Because you need that security. You need to know that here's my bed, I can come home to it, and this is where it's gonna be, and that's gonna be okay. Or here's my mom, and no matter what, she's gonna be there for me, and I can just call her and she'll show up, and that's gonna be okay. When you can't believe that anymore, it starts to make you question, well, what can you believe? Who can you trust? What is a for sure thing? You begin to stop valuing certain things. To the Miami Herald for the 2019 video documentary, Perversion of Justice. The Herald documentary gives a platform to the voices of the victims of Jeffrey Epstein, the multimillionaire and serial pedophile first investigated by the Herald last year. While that series won a President's Award in 2019, this year's subsequent documentary focuses on the women who had been shut out of the court process, a masterpiece of empathetic reporting and investigative power. This past year, it has made me feel a lot more free in my life. I love a lot more. I open up a lot more. <laughs> like there's been something in me for so long that just says keep on fighting. And finally, like this past year, it's been like, okay, this is why I'm doing this. I didn't imagine that it would empower so many crime victims, among them the women that were victims of Epstein. There's no way to fully compensate for the trauma that I've gone through in my life. But one way of transcending that trauma is by speaking up. And I won't stop fighting. I will never be silenced until these people are brought to justice. To the Sacramento Bee for Destined to Burn, a constructive look at the California paradox of living in an idyllic slice of heaven that will inevitably become a searing spot of hell. Destined to Burn is both a pragmatic, ex pragmatic examination of how California might prepare for its environmental challenges and an enigmatic look at our apparent acceptance of probable destruction. Sometimes the regulations are actually minimal. Most of the time they're minimal. The contractor that builds your house is really a lot of the the quality of the house is on him. It's you working together to make sure it's a, it's a well-built house. I could have just followed the regulations and had a crappy house at the end of the day. <laughs> to the Wichita Eagle for special treatment. This is as simple, elegant, and hard-hitting as it gets. A reporter substituting on a beat finds governmental corruption. It's classic, hard-nosed, old-fashioned reporting that finds the mayor gave hundreds of millions of dollars in business to his friends. On November 5th, Longwell had dinner with two Wichita Water Partners contractors again for four hours at Greystone Steak and Seafood in East Wichita. His calendar says the meeting lasted until 10 p.m. The next morning, Longwell started steering the contract in their direction. City staff recommended awarding the contract to Jacobs. 
Instead, Longwell started steering the contract to Wichita Water Partners. This city has never taken up a contract of this size or nature in the history of the city of Wichita. To the Lexington Herald leader for Caged, inmates suffer and die as Kentucky overcrowds its county jails. A beautifully written, crystal clear story that let the outrages and the victims speak for themselves. Caged had deep historical perspective and was very open about its mission to provoke reform of a system that has been in crisis for years. This is classic, big, ambitious public service journalism at its finest. Jails and prisons are not the same thing. Jails are small boxes run by local governments, simply meant to hold inmates for a short time near the county courthouse. Prisons are large boxes run by the state government, meant to house inmates for years, to rehabilitate them and return them to society as better citizens. To the San Luis Obispo Tribune for air quality on or near Nemo Mesa. This is quintessential high impact journalism that brings to life a serious and silent hazard, one that a community has lived with and indeed enjoyed using for decades without understanding the deadly effects on their air quality. From the crowdsourcing of community example and data analysis to the compelling storytelling and the news you can use, ultimately to its concrete positive impact, this is what powerful local journalism is all about. Areas that are known to have high particulate matter uh, are known to be associated with higher than normal respiratory issues. We see that in terms of respiratory admits to the hospital or uh, people who are needing respiratory treatment from their physicians. The McClatchy DC Bureau for Stricken. Why are so many Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans getting cancer? This package demonstrates what happens when a team of journalists work tirelessly to build a data-driven investigation and a multimedia content package. The investigation intricately threaded detailed, heart-wrenching stories of veterans battling with cancer with the deeply reported data that the team was able to derive. It's no surprise that after Stricken published, dozens of emails from veterans and their families poured in asking that McClatchy keep digging. Stricken has prompted congressional hearings and legislation. The life expectancy of multiple myeloma is five years. Five years. You can't do nothing in five years. That's when it all hits you. Why did this happen? I got cancer because of my service in the military. And there could be hundreds, thousands of other veterans behind me getting cancer from their service. To the Charlotte Observer for Dismissed. Dismissed stands out for the thoroughness of its data-informed journalism. It provides a compelling and well-told story on what enables serial gun-related crimes to occur in a community and the continued culpability of a legal system that is failing Mecklenburg's residents. That was my baby, my heart. Now, when you get involved with a fight or something like that, they want to tirade and they want to go get guns. And that leave a lot of families hurt and pain. To the Kansas City Star for Defenseless, a seething look at Missouri's underfunded and perpetually understaffed public defender system. This series spotlights lives that changed forever as a result of a long ignored problem. Defenseless is a prime example of shoe leather reporting at its best. For six months, a reporter and opinion columnist traveled across the state interviewing public defenders, prosecutors, judges, and defendants in more than two dozen counties. The series ran in seven parts, five news stories, bookended by a column and an editorial calling for the state to fund and fix the public defender's office. Perhaps the most powerful part of this series, the reaction it ignited throughout the state, lawmakers promised urgency in solving the problem 
and readers lauded the series via a full page thank you advertisement in the star. Poor people don't have a voice that's never changed. Um, and if you're poor, albeit presumed innocent, if you're kept in a cage and away from your family uh, because your bond's too high, well, that starts a, to feel a whole lot like you're presumed guilty because you are being punished by definition for being poor. We're doing many things differently this year, which is obvious. And this would be a time that we would shake hands and take pictures. But the fact that we're not all together doesn't in any way dim the congratulations to this winner, this year's winners that we're providing and recognition of those efforts, which have provided vital information to our communities, held the powerful to account and given voice to the powerless. Your work represents the highest expression of our mission and clearly demonstrates the value and necessity of strong, independent local journalism. Please join me in congratulating this year's McClatchy President's Award winners. Congratulations to everybody. And next up, the Chairman's Circle Awards. I'm gonna hand things over to Nick Johnson and Kevin McClatchy to announce this year's winners in advertising sales. Good afternoon, everyone, and congratulate to the winners that were just announced. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to tee up the Chairman's Circle Award winners. This is an incredible group of people that are representing the entire sales organization. We've never seen an advertising environment like this one, and I'm so proud of the work of the team, the resilience, the tenacity. You've shifted, from a, you've shifted to a work from home sales environment. You've become consultants to your clients and you've done it with empathy and strategy. And that's a terrific combination. We talk about one team a lot, but it's situations like this that force us into new behaviors and new muscle memory. And these shared experiences make us a stronger and more unified team. And I'm really excited for that. With that being said, I'd like to turn it over to Kevin McClatchy, the chairman of McClatchy. He's a fifth generation McClatchy family member and importantly to this group, an alumni of the ad sales team. He's a former Miami Herald ad exec and Sacramento Bee ad sales rep and director. Kevin, please take it away. Thank you, Nick. Greetings all. It's great to be here with you today, recognizing great work across the company. Congratulations to all the President's Award winners. It's amazing work you guys have done. Now it's time to talk about our advertising team as we introduce the winners of the 2019 Chairman Circle. Announcing the Chairman Circle recipients is always a sincere pleasure for me. We are now in our seventh year. This year is no different, as I'm thoroughly impressed and proud of their accomplishments. This year we had 25 nominees. I have to tell you, narrowing the nominations down to a slate of 10 wasn't easy. All produced stellar results, and I couldn't help but notice past chairman recipients in the list of nominees. I'm personally grateful to each of them for their tenacity and desire not only to improve their results year after year, but their clients' results as well. I would like all nominees to be recognized as they are stars in my book. Congratulations again to all the sales and marketing professionals for a successful 2019. The Chairman's Circle is our highest honor for sales and marketing professionals. Judging was done in complete alignment with our foundation. The four core, the, the core four plus sales process and delivering the right results the right way which further reinforces our client-focused mission. And the review process was powered by Salesforce. We had some amazing performances and we had a very difficult time narrowing the field, but I could not be more pleased with this year's recipients. With no further ado, here are our 2019 Chairman Circle recipients. Allison Murphy, local marketing consultant with Columbia State. Allison is a consistent performer with acute digital acumen and has been a leader in the Columbia local team for the last two years. In 2019, she grew her revenue by 42% and digital only by 72% prior year and is a key member of the Level Up pilot team. Next is Angela Dwyer, strategic marketing consultant, Miami Herald. Angela is a two times Chairman Circle winner she has also won this award in 2017. Angela's incredible ability to find creative ways to grow revenue with a combination of new initiatives and creative partnerships 
has led her to producing over 4.5 million in total revenue with over 1.4 in digital revenue. A strong team player, Angela consistently leads by example and is well respected by her leaders and peers and customers alike. And our next winner is Ashley Nilovo. Um, Ashley is from the Sacramento Bee. Ashley has a unique skill in making the complex look simple while effectively managing the balance between delivering exceptional customer service and identifying and executing strong digital revenue growth. Ashley manages some of the company's largest accounts, totaling over $2.5 million. She quickly becomes the client's go-to for marketing and their advisor on growing their business. Our next winner is uh, Blue Dancer, local marketing consultant, Lexington uh, Herald Leader East. Blue's keen digital acumen combined with his tremendous work ethic has led him to be a consistent performer with 90% of his revenue portfolio being digital, generating over $800,000 in digital revenue in 2019. It is clear why his customers look at him as a partner who provides strategic direction to move their business forward. Our next winner, Bonnie Powell, local sales supervisor, the Hilton Head Island Packet. Bonnie has been a leader in digital revenue growth for the, for the past three years. In June 2019, she was promoted to sales supervisor and tasked with leading her team while maintaining and growing her own book of business, which she did with a 43% increase in digital revenue from prior year. Bonnie has leaned into this challenge. Her energy, her enthusiasm are contagious, and she is a fearless role model. Our next winner is Brent Knight, local marketing consultant from the Sacramento Bee. Brent moved from client success to sales in December 2018, and that experience in the CSS role has served him well. In just one year, Brent grew digital revenue by 46%, nearly $300,000 in 2019, while also increasing his total revenue by 10% a consistent follower of the core four plus sales process. Brent is always helping his peers and brainstorming new creative ideas and is looked upon by his customers as a true partner. Dana Santini, strategic sales director of Sacramento B West. I understand how people, understanding people and how to motivate them is an art form. And Dana has proven to be, proven that to be one of her many skills. Uh, her desire to win and drive towards a strategic vision is evident as she drove her team to nearly 30% year-over-year digital-only growth. She is a passionate leader with the ability to pivot, shift strategy as needed. Emma Ashmawi, a strategic consultant, Myrtle Beach, Sun News. Goal-driven and extremely knowledgeable. Emma grew her digital revenue by $345,000 in 2019, nearly doubling her prior year. She's built great relationships, balancing the needs of both her customers and McClatchy alike, while driving significant ROI in each campaign. It's evident why Emma's customer, customers view her as a trusted advisor. John Canfield, local sales consultant for the Olympian. Fully embracing the digital transformation, John has proved that local marketing consultants can grow their digital revenue to, at a substantial pace, achieving his revenue goal in 10 out of 12 periods and his digital revenue goal in 11 out of 12 in 2019. John exceeded his prior year revenue by over 15% and digital only revenue by 27%. It's no wonder why John is looked upon by both his fellow team members and his customers as a strong strategic partner. And last but not least, Justin Cunningham, strategic marketing consultant from the Sacramento Bee. I have noticed the Sacramento Bee is doing very well. Congratulations. Uh, Justin, a consistent performer, achieved an astonishing 68% year-over-year growth in digital revenue generating over $935,000 in 2019, while total revenue by nearly 200,000. Justin's great ability to quickly connect and gain rapport with his customers combined with his passion 
and dedication to his jobs are key factors uh, to his tremendous success. Congratulations to all our chairman's winners. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to turn it back over to Craig Foreman. Kevin, thank you. And congratulations to all of our chairman's circle winners. As Nick shared, this is a particularly challenging time to be in the advertising business. But I wanna say wholeheartedly and really from the heart that our entire enterprise is standing with you shoulder to shoulder, virtually and on Salesforce, as you know, and you have our full support and confidence. There's no better team in the industry to take on this challenge and we will do everything in our power to help you to succeed, which includes personally adding as many bell ringing emojis as I can every time I see something on Salesforce that we can ring the bell to celebrate. I mentioned at the opening that we would have new awards to announce and I'd like to turn to that now. We're launching two new awards today, the James McClatchy Award and the Eleanor McClatchy Award. And here's the backstory. We celebrate our news and advertising team's accomplishments every year with the President's and the Chairman, Chairman's Circle Awards. But we have no award that recognizes the incredible work being done in other areas of our business. That's why we're launching the James McClatchy Award, to honor the accomplishments of colleagues in production, operations, finance, accounting, audience, technology, product, customer service, people, and all of our support teams across the company from advertising and every other functional area. We named the new award after James McClatchy, our founder and Kevin's great grandfather, whose pioneering journalism career set the foundation for our company 163 years ago, and as we know it today, and also anchored us in the values of which this company is proud, sustainable, independent public service journalism. The James McClatchy Award will be given out twice a year to six colleagues, and we will open nominations on the 1st of July. We're also celebrating our first annual Eleanor McClatchy Award. We are excited to have an award named after Eleanor McClatchy, who led this company as our president for 40 years. Eleanor McClatchy's accomplishments and career as a woman leading a media company starting in 1936 are not widely known outside of Sacramento and not as widely known as they should be. Eleanor McClatchy expanded her family's newspaper enterprise into radio and television. She embraced new technologies and was an active supporter, deeply engaged in the greater Sacramento community. The Eleanor McClatchy Award recognizes high potential colleagues who show vision, exemplary leadership skills, have a one team mindset and contribute to our company's transformation. The executive team has collaborated to identify the first recipient, recipient of the Eleanor McClatchy Award, and we are excited to announce that now. The winner of the first Eleanor McClatchy Award is Carrie Bean, Senior Director of News Publishing. Carrie exemplifies our intent for the Eleanor McClatchy Award. She has worked collaboratively, diligently, and tirelessly over the years to transform our print newspaper processes, horizontalize, functionalize, and centralize them, and ensure that our newsrooms can be digitally focused. Carrie is a key connector between news and advertising, and news and product, and news and vendors. Carrie gets things done with grace, with good humor, with the utmost in professionalism and sensitivity. She has faced some significantly daunting assignments with strategic importance over the length of her career, and she has always responded with creative and innovative solutions to get the job done. Without Carrie, we would not have our 28 newspapers in the editions. Her work is at the heart of our transformation. Congratulations, Carrie. We are thrilled, thrilled to recognize your leadership and accomplishments. So congratulations to all of our award winners. We applaud your accomplishments and energy. And thank you for assembling virtually today to celebrate our collective efforts and the work that is so vital to our communities, especially now as we live through this odd time and terrible pandemic. Thank you for continuing to deliver on our mission of essential local journalism, 
congratulations to our award winners and to all of our colleagues. I'm very proud to be part of this one team. Thank you.